Howdy peeps and welcome back again to more of the Knight's Planet Red Riding Hood and I forget where we left it last time because it's been a couple of days and I've been busy building other things in the meantime so should we get back into shot and see what we have first of all let's move the box out of the way move these out of the way and switch to old cut and mat. As you can see by the state of the kitchen towel, there's been a lot of brush cleaning, etc., going on. So, there we go. Here she is. Now, the cloak is getting dusty already. Basically done. I might go back and add a little darker wash in some of the shadows. It looks pretty good to me anyway. Um, and the inside we've got the fade as well going on. So we're pretty much there with that. The little scabbardy thing. I basically just painted and washed the rest as I have with the boots. No need to show you that. Because it's exactly the same. On the little daggery swordy thing, I just painted the uh, cross piece in, I think it was Skull Crusher Brass, just to give it the golden hue. We will then go back and dry brush that with a gold colour. And then on Little Red herself, I'm trying to remember what else I did. I added a light dry brush to the darker leather and picked up the little studs which I'll do the actual boot ones now I think um, and I oh, hang on, focus on the face, focus on the face, there we go and I also Painted in her hair in a dark reddish brown and put the white in her eyes. And I think I'll put an extra coat of whatever it was on the lipstick. So, that's all I've done in between. And as you can tell, yes, I am kind of leaving the uh, skin till last. Because, I will be honest, that's the bit that scares me. Painting metal and leather I can do all day long, but skin is the one... That makes me go oh no I've got to paint skin so I think I might actually add some extra light to this although whether my head getting in the way will cause massive shadows we shall soon find out so plug in look down switch on so I don't blind myself by staring directly into the light so first thing we're going to need some silver paint a little palette which as you can see I've been painting other stuff as well which is getting rather covered it's going to need a clean up soon and we'll grab back our steel and now if I can find it oh, where'd it go where do you go, where do you go, where do you go, there it is. Tiny brush time. Now most people won't ever go this small with a brush. It's a Absalom 502 10-0, absolutely minute. I could do this with the 5-0 quite happily, but the bristles are starting to splay on that, so... It's just easier to do it with this. Is my head getting in the way? I don't think so. Right. So we'll start at the top and we just pick out the little buttons. And then the actual buckles. Okay, so this isn't hard or a difficult technique it just requires a steady hand and a bit of patience 
and probably good eyesight. Most will probably wear a Optivisor to do this. I generally just either get closer to my face or actually look over the top of my glasses because I am short sighted. So when things are close up, I can actually see them better without the glasses. This is a this is also one where if your depth perception isn't the greatest it can be a struggle. And my depth perception close range is better without my glasses, so I'm looking over the top of them right now. And there we go. Let's actually let's zoom in a little so you can actually see more than just my hand. So we can see we picked out the oh when I'm staring straight into the lights to look at the screen. So we picked out all the buckles on the boots. Now we can look through the various strappy bits and pick out any buttons or buckles on those as well. There's not too many of them. He says as he finds about 3,000 of the blooming things. This kind of, this kind of thing is always better if you can actually support the figure and hold it steady rather than trying to hold it up in the air with a hand. That's when you start in introducing excess shakings of the mix. So as you can see, I'm holding her by the base and into the cutting mat as well. There's a couple of little bits there. Is that one? Yeah. We have a Buckle it looks like here. No, oh, I'm getting the shakes now. It's best not to do this kind of detail work if you're not. It's better to do it once you've woken up. Preferably not after you've done like a full day's work or something and you're getting a bit worn out. And the old eyes get a bit tired and you get a bit shaky. Won't bother with any of the bits around the back because they certainly won't be visible. And it's just the little strappy bits now on the, uh, the various buckles on the bra top she's wearing. sometimes it's an idea if the brush angle is a bit strange or you can't quite see just change the angle of the figure because some of these bits are very small that I'm trying to paint and even though it's relatively early and I've not been to work yet it's a case of the most minor tremors can make you miss where you're aiming for. And there are some across the top of the straps, but I'm catching a shadow. So again, I'll turn her around to get a better angle. 
so that the light's not casting a shadow where I want to paint. These are only tiny little dots. And I believe that is about it. There's no more straps or anything around the back. So we can call that that for there. Clean my brush off the way you really shouldn't do. And if I can get her in the light, you'll be able to see the buckles and buttons and all sorts all picked out and ready to go. Now I'll add a I will add a wash to the um, crotch armour. I guess she doesn't want to get stabbed there. Just, to, just in the actual recesses though to pick out the detail. Check I am in shot. Yes, I am just. we can go all over because we can then dry brush it later and re-pick out the detail It'll give us more of a contrast between the darker and the lighter parts there we go I should probably clean out because I noticed there was some metallic left in that. Right, so while we leave that to dry, what can we be moving on with? Let's get onto the sword. We'll just pop it there. So we got the main blade which was painted with the steel and then given an null oil wash. We have the handle, which definitely needs a wash on it as well. For this, let's go with the seraphim. And this is a, 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 a seraphim sepia. So again, a Games Workshop shade, but it's just a, a sepia rather than the darker colours we have used and we'll just apply this into the recesses and details which there aren't a huge amount on here but it all helps it stand out and the same on the other side that's the thing to not forget is either two <laughs> there's at least two sides to everything to paint on a miniature pretty much if not three or four we'll add a little around the bottom of the blade as well that's gone on a little heavier than I liked but never mind that'll soon disappear So that will be virtually invisible quite probably. And I don't know why I'm bothering to shake this one. It's just a complete... You now you pick up a pot of paint and shake it. But this is what I was saying about the other day. The Necron compound, the Citadel dry brush paints. Nothing comes out. It's a thick, goopy paste which is ideal for dry brushing. So I shall grab my little worn out brush I use for dry brushing. And the same technique we used in previous videos. Bit of paint on the brush, scrub most of it off. And we're just gonna pick up the highlights on the sword. A 
けども。This is less a pick up highlights, it's more as a cover most of it and just leave the wash in the recesses. We can come back and brighten up the edges a bit later if we want to. So we will be coming back later on. Well, I might do it in a bit actually, put some blood stains on the sword. So just don't forget to make sure you highlight the edges. Make them nice and shiny. So again, even though you may not be able to see a difference, it's looking more metallic. It's got got the edge highlights. Looking rather nice. And I will do the same on the hilt with the, what was it they call it, the Sigmarite, which is the gold version. As you can see, I mean, this one's even thicker and goopier. So we'll just make sure we scrubbed it all out of the dry brush and just make sure I put the pot in shot you'll be able to see just how goopy this stuff is <laughs> it's this is definitely more of a paste than a paint yeah. but a little goes a long way so it's not a problem uh, we just do the same On this and just bring up those details and tie it all together a bit more. If anything this <laughs> if anything this bottle of paint is too thick and goopy. But hey, we'll get there. Yeah, I am just about in shot. This is the thing I thought about the most when I was thinking of doing a figure painting series. Is it actually, will I be able to keep it in shot? So, that'll do for that. Trying to think what to do next. I think next job. Oh, I just realised I missed a massive buckle on a belt. So we'll pick up the tiny brush again. Hopefully that paint's not dry yet. Not quite. And we'll get again lay her down so she's pretty well supported. There we 
go. So, what's for next time? I'm thinking next time we might have to start getting on to dry brushing the skin. Oh joy. And then it'll be the eyes and the hair. And just again generally more of what we have been doing. Building up washes, dry brushes, building up the depth, the different tones. And see where we end up at. So hope that's at least been enjoyable background noise and waffle if you haven't actually watched or learnt anything um, if you have I hope it helped but as usual have fun keep modelling peace out rock on and bye bye